Baseball Grand National of all time. 44 riders, 43 losers, but one man was going to ride the winner. And what a surprise. This was the weather. What a day. These were the losers. And these were the winners. Bobby Tway Punters, hundreds of on-the-nose backers. Well, it just wasn't their day. If only they'd known. Somewhere there was Foynaven. No form, no chance, they said. 100 to 1 winner. Even Kirtle Lad must have been more in the running. But it was Foynaven with the biggest odds for 20 years that was to be first home. Lined up and raring to go. They were away first time. Storming towards the first jump and the first bad omen for punters. He claimed second favourite Bassnet and two others, me and Valley and pop them down. And Volgo and Principal led the field into the second. moments yet, but there was no change in the order as they went into number three. And Volgo and Principal still made the running, but anyone with money on Volcano, April Rose and Dorimant had lost it already. Gamely plugging away somewhere in the field was the Grand National Grandpa, 67-year-old Tim Durrant on Ariel the Third. the fifth they went. Order still the same and plenty of big hopes with lots of time to make the running later on holding back. This was Beecher. The jump the next time round would preface one of the biggest dramas the course had ever seen. Ken Volgo was on his own, running for the canal turn. This was one time when the sharp left-hander didn't claim any victim. Valentine's Brook, nothing really sensational. A few fallers. The favourite was still going strong and handy, with Josh Gifford biding his time and keeping the sweet smell of success for Honey End and the punters at the tent. Showing strongly at the 11th was Rutherford. Kirtle Ladd kept close. Now the field had opened up. that didn't make it to the water jump. The last obstacle of the first circuit, but it was a bit much to expect the same form as last year from the 66 winner. And on they went into the second sensational circuit. None of them could know that a couple of minutes ahead, they'd be involved in the most incredible pile-up of all time. Jump 17, the first of the fateful few. Rutherford's was holding the lead. Kirtle Ladd was still there with him. Order unchanged at the 19th, but Kilburn was out. Our camera car was close as they galloped on to jump 20. The lead remained with Rutherford's, Kirtle Ladd and Principal. Running into Beecher's, two loose horses were first over. But this was where the fantastic full stop to the Grand National began. No ballers, everyone safe over. Ahead, a simple gorse fence. But it was not to be. Pop them down, a first jump faller really popped them down. Different class, the Fossa, Lime King, Norther, Dunwiddie, all went down. Watch the incredible pilot.
Out of the shambles, one horse appeared, complete with rider, Foyne Avon. But at the 23rd, it was chaos. Horses were going in all directions. Some of them back the way they'd just come. Some jumped, some just clambered over. Somehow, most of the runners got going again. But a long way ahead was Foynaven. Jockey John Buckingham could hardly believe his luck. Over the canal turn, and he was more than 200 yards ahead of the field. Nobody could hope to catch him. But there were some triers. Honey End wasn't going to let him get away with it too easily. Foynaven safely into and over Valentine's. Only a fall could keep him from being first. What a day for the bookies! This was the last fence between Foynaven and the £17,000 victory. Honey End had closed the gap, but not nearly enough. Foynaven, tired, slowing, but unbeatable, ran for home. That was the win that made it Bookie's boom day and shattered the hopes of thousands. In the winner's enclosure, no owner, no trainer. Neither could be at Aintree to greet the winner of the Grand National 1967. Never in a million years did they expect a win. There he was, the best of the bunch. No wonder he was all steamed up.